Now it's time for Culture Talk. This is the segment where we talk about the intersection of science, faith, and pop culture, and how culturally relevant topics can be used to start conversations about your faith. I'm joined today by astronomer Hugh Ross. It's Thanksgiving time. It's turkey time. Yes. So typically when it's Thanksgiving time, what do we do? We thank God. We thank God. And we thank God for some unique things here at Reasons to Believe. Everything from whale excrement. I think that was on your list one year. That's right. And uh, something. Ants. Also. Ants. Yeah. Yeah. And this year we're going to thank God for the Big Bang. All right. Yeah. Sounds great. <laughs> so let's talk about the Big Bang. What does science say about the Big Bang? Basically, it tells us it's a correct explanation of the origin and history of the universe. Mm -hmm. Big Bang cosmology is founded on the concept that the universe has a beginning of matter, energy, space, and time, expands from that space-time beginning under laws of physics that never change, mm -hmm. where one of those laws is a pervasive law of decay, which means the universe gets colder and colder as mm -hmm. it gets older and older. Now, I didn't pick up a Bible till I was 17. Mm -hmm. What really struck me about the Bible, it said all those things about the universe thousands of years ago. So, well, first, what scientists are saying, we have this cosmic origin, and there's this burst of, well, creation, I guess, if that's what we call it as Christians, but we see the cosmos coming into an existence, and it's stretching out over a long period of time, and you said it's getting colder, well, any system that expands under mm -hmm. thermodynamics, this pervasive law of decay, mm -hmm. will get colder as it gets larger right. and larger. Your piston engine, your car, operates under that same principle. So that's what science is telling us. Yes. So we have this big bang, and right. then it stretches out, and it gets colder. So right. now let's dive into scripture. What does scripture tell us? Well, scripture tells us that the universe has a beginning. Mm -hmm. Not just any kind of beginning, but a beginning of space and time itself. And how... From that beginning, we have the universe expanding, and it tells us it expands under laws of physics that never change. The laws are constant, and one of those laws is, as Ecclesiastes and Romans points out, mm -hmm. a pervasive law of decay, where everything is decaying. I mean, look at me. I'm evidence of ongoing <laughs> decay, right? We all are. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so then, uh, give us some, some passages where we read about that, about the heavens being stretched out. Well, you'll see it multiple times in mm -hmm. the book of Isaiah and Jeremiah, where God stretches out the heavens. Right. That's how most English translations have it. The Hebrew verb, not ta, that's translated stretching out, actually means expansion of the system. Basically telling us that God created it with that property in the beginning, and it's an ongoing feature of the universe. You see that in the use of the different verbs. So thousands of years before scientists found, discovered the Big Bang, that that is the, how the cosmos originated. Thousands of years before then, in the Hebrew, we, we are already learning and being told about cosmic expansion. That's what struck me when I first mm -hmm. began to go through the Bible at age 17. Because as a young astronomy student, I knew that no book of science or philosophy or history even hinted that we live in a continuous expanding universe until the 20th century. But here you got Job, Isaiah, David, uh, Jeremiah, Zechariah speaking about this ongoing expansion of the universe thousands of years before any scientists even had a clue that that was a property of the universe. It's unique to the Bible. That struck me at age 17. This book has predictive power. Mm -hmm. If it's got the power to accurately predict future scientific discoveries, it can't come from just a purely human source. It must be inspired by the one that actually did the deed. So it was a huge step in my becoming persuaded that the Bible is the Word of God and that I needed to submit my life to Jesus Christ, the creator of the Big Bang. Well, you know, what you're saying here is that that was a catalyst for you coming to faith for for some and for me i know there was a time when i was you know in this crisis of faith and the big bang and thinking of the predictive power in the bible that's what helped me to cling to my faith because if the bible authors couldn't see with their naked eye obviously that there was a big bang and there was cosmic expansion there they had no way of really knowing so the bible had to be inspired by god and that was enough to help me cling to my faith and then, of course, get into a good community and mm -hmm. uh, dive deeper into the Word. But it, it was so encouraging to know that the Bible is 
and does have predictive power. So you got a reason to thank God for the Big Bang that's different from my reason, yeah. but it's consistent. Yes. Yeah, so when yeah. we're sitting at the dinner table with our family, are we going to thank God for the Big Bang? As well as Neptune and ants and bacteria and viruses and Wonderful. sulfate reducing uh, creatures. Yes, we're going to do all that. Well, now I have a, a very pressing question for you. What I'm sure everyone's going to want to know is what is your favorite Thanksgiving food? My favorite Thanksgiving food uh, would probably be, be the, uh, the turkey, mm. particularly when it's a big turkey. I like these really big 30 pound turkeys because then you can get a really good chunk of meat and you cook it just right. I like to really stuff it in just the right way. And cranberry on the side? Uh, yeah, <laughs> but fresh cranberries is the mm, best. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you for answering the important questions, uh, not just what you like for Thanksgiving, but why we're thankful to God for, for the Big Bang. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, You're Hugh. Welcome. If you want to hear more from Dr. Ross, visit reasons.org and search Today's New Reason to Believe.